Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most beneficent. All praises are due to Allah the Almighty, of whom we ask to send his peace and blessings upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his final messenger and so on. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Visual Addiction. This program not only supports each and every person who wants to uphold the values, the moral values in their families and ensure that their children are not to be exposed to such environments. But it gives you an understanding of how industries uh, profit from that, how careers are affected, how each and every person, even with their gender, are affected differently. Because we all act in a different manner. A woman cannot be the same as a man in how she thinks. So that is why today, inshallah, we're going to be having a very special topic with our beloved brother, Mr. Wa'il Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. How are you today? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I'm excellent. Alhamdulillah. Allah barak. Jazakallah khair again and again for inviting me and for, having, for, for giving us this opportunity. May Allah bless you. I feel that you are the ones who have invited us because in the end I feel like a student that is learning from your experience mashallah and I feel that we are in your depth God willing that uh, this immense knowledge and experience may Allah bless you may Allah amin wa so um, Mr. Wa'il we have a very particular topic that we want to speak of today and that is the effects of pornography not on men or children but on women themselves so, um, if you can start from your end. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You always corner me, right? You just introduce <laughs> a topic and then, hey, tell them what's happening, you know? <laughs> it won't be easy, huh? We have, to learn, we have to learn from the best and you're more knowledgeable. So, why would I speak? Why would I start? <laughs> no, when I started the research, I never had, you know, even the slightest, the slightest thought that women have got anything to do with pornography. Like I never thought that there are actually girls or women would watch porn or be addicted to pornography. I never thought of that. And uh, when the research, when, it, when, when we read the studies and the statistics that 65% uh, or 70% uh, more men watch porn or pornography and 30% perhaps uh, females, I never give it a much thought until I actually delivered a talk in public and i was inviting the public to contact me remember in, in the previous episode i said that i was in a, in a particular country i think in malaysia and i asked people uh and, and 320 emails were received on that night alone that lecture it was my first time to see a female religious coming to me and asking me for help and as you can see how sensitive the topic is for a, for a man to address this, you know, and to talk to a sister who is confessing to you her addiction. So she must have been collecting her courage throughout a 20 minutes talk to talk to a man about this uh, taboo uh, issue. That was the day that I decided to look into it uh, with a different perspective. So I started reaching out to my mentors, my supervisors, and I was astonished to know that even females get affected badly by pornography. Even though more men watch porn, porn than women, we also, uh, we also found, in, according to those studies, that women, and that's the dangerous part, women tend to act out their fantasies faster than men. So you would see men who are addicted to pornography for years, 10 years, 15 years, sometimes 40 years, as I mentioned earlier. But woman does not wait that long before acting out her fantasy because men crave novelty fantasy and they are happy with the screens and self-pleasuring however women tends connection they need real partners real partners to fulfill that desire and that of course could lead to a disaster could lead to infidelity and uh, cheating on husbands and so on and so forth so this is one aspect of how pornography could impact women May Allah protect our wives and daughters, Allahumma Ameen. Because indeed, you know, even um, there are many st like statistics out there. They state the increase of women. If you can talk about 
the visitors of these pornographic sites. Uh, what are the numbers that we have to be aware of? Well, we, uh, we are told that uh, between 2016 to 2017 on that uh, very popular website, which we uh, intend not to make mention of, of course, uh, they have experienced on their website an increase by 359% of women usage of their platform. That's a between big number. Yeah, that's a big jump in, within one year. They experienced that jump. And, uh, and this is something very, very scary. And we know why. Because women who are addicted to pornography, they do not, they do not enjoy real life intimacy, real intercourse with their spouses or in the West with their partners, who even maybe not married at all. They don't enjoy that part because they suffer, just like how we said in the, in the previous episode, I believe, that some boys, some men suffer from what is known as porn-induced erectile dysfunction. We also found that women suffer from similar things, but not, of course, the same condition, but it's called situational anorgasmia, where women cannot experience that climax or that pleasure when she she's with her partner or, or with her husband. The only time she experiences that time, that moment, is when she watches porn and also, uh, uh, you know, participate in self pleasure. So the replacement of the real thing or that which is legislated in Islam is now being replaced with something which, God forbid, can really cause catastrophic results. So uh, yes. on, uh, on this particular sense, what would you advise like um, from the sense of being uh, husbands who want to make sure that their wives are protected from uh, these kind of uh, addictions or exposures? And at the same time, like this is one point. And the other point is, how can we see the signs of such things? This is very tricky, my brother uh, Mustafa. I always advise husbands, males in particular, that if they are addicted to pornography and they wanted to find a solution, the best person to tell their agony to uh, is their wife. That's, that's my advice. Go to your wife and open up and bear with patience whatever reaction that you see from your wife. It will take a day or two, but in most cases, women will show support and will stand by your side. But the opposite is not necessarily true. So if, if a woman is really addicted and she's been addicted uh, to that habit for years and now she's married, it's not advisable to go and talk to her husbands because the reaction might be severely bad. Rather, reach out to a female counselor. That's why we have a guest tonight, uh, tonight or in this episode where Inshallah, uh, our sister will address this uh, perhaps in greater length. But uh, this is the advice. To reach out to a female counselor, a female psychologist perhaps, and uh, she would walk you through the steps on how to get rid of uh, this addiction. As regards to husbands, in order to protect their wives, number one, you should stay away from pornography yourself. So if you have any issue related to porn, stay away, fix that mess and try your very best to remain sober for a period of eight, we always say eight months to a year, in order for your brain to rewire itself so that it can, inshallah, provide her with any necessity in that space. And uh, as a result, inshallah, she would be healed and uh, go back to her normal, inshallah, uh, reaction. Or, or the hormones will, will react normally after a certain time, inshallah. Uh, but do you say, do you say that um, it may not be true uh, that uh, if a man uh, if a man goes and opens up to his wife, uh, that I understand. But if a woman goes and opens up to a man, now I, I know where you're coming from with this. I totally agree. Um, but is it due to the misunderstanding of men, or or, or what exactly? Like, uh, is it something that we should fix? Like, do you advise if a wife and her husband, who are very logical, very well practicing Muslims, and they're very open-minded in that which pleases Allah? Uh, if the husband is accepting that a wife would come in whatever kind of problem that she has, is it okay or what do you say? Yeah, so we have seen in the West, uh, this is very open. Like uh, the West, they have developed that space where, uh, you know, non-Muslim communities in, in particular, and this is something that uh, we should also uh, look into. We have seen that it's it's very open, that, that discussion is very open. A female or a wife could easily approach her husband and talk to him 
about her uh, you know, struggles in that area. But in our culture, no matter where you come from, if you're a Muslim and you came from that background, wherever you were born into, uh, there is that big taboo for a wife to confess her addiction to pornography to her man. It's, it's very difficult to swallow when it comes to this uh, problem. And it creates a lot of doubts, a lot of uh, jealousy from the husband's side. And it could lead to divorce. It could lead to aggressive reaction or, uh, you know, domestic violence. Uh, we have seen it in so many uh, situations. So we advise that if a wife really is struggling, rather than telling her husband and add more troubles to her troubles, go to a female counselor, a female psychologist, a female uh, sex therapist, perhaps, to help you walk through a recovery plan. And while you're doing that, try to uh, be attentive to your husband when it comes to sexual intimacy. May Allah bless you, Mr. Wael. Indeed, very wise words and a very careful plan at that because uh, I like how you put into consideration the differences of culture and that how each and every uh, gender would respond differently. So truly, we have to make sure that we abide by understanding and logical approaches so as to not have an adverse effect, that it doesn't backfire. We do thank you, uh, Mr. Wael, for your beautiful participation and uh, inshallah after the break we're gonna be again once again learning from your acquaintances mashallah may allah bless you and uh, you. until then uh, i would really have to thank you and pray that allah protects you and your family and everyone else jazakumullah khairan wa iyaakum inshallah we'll see you next episode bi idhnillah bi as alaikum wa alaikum salam brothers and sisters mashallah we've uh, really reach a very high step here of understanding is that when you approach resolutions do so in wisdom not just a cliche fashion saying that hey your wife or your daughter are now watching pornography or being caught or exposed to that environment you don't have to tackle them but again for the sisters out there who seek professional help we highly advise you to follow up the instructions that were given by Mr. Wal Ibrahim which, are, which is very common sense, by the way, mashallah. Just go to the female doctor, speak to her, and ask Allah to help you and to aid you in repentance and of resolution. May Allah bless. So, brothers, we're going out for a short break. Until then, stay tuned and stay pious. <laughs> Welcome back, brothers and sisters. We hope you enjoyed your break. I've been enjoying learning from the wonderful experts that have been speaking with us from day one of visual addiction. But the surprises doesn't seem to end because today we have a very wonderful guest. We have Mrs. Kalisha Bennett, all the way from Sydney, in Australia. She is, mashallah, the founder of Developing Diamonds. And she's also a certified Aware Academy mentor and speaker as well. She is the head of Aware Academy female chapter in Sydney. She is also a community leader and mashallah the titles go on. We could definitely learn from her inshallah. So allow me to greet her. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sister. How are you today? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah I'm well thank you very much. May Allah bless you. Mashallah you have over 14 years of experience so definitely each and every day we can learn from your experience inshallah ta'ala may Allah bless you now uh, with your permission Amen. sister we wanted to speak about because we spoke with Mr. Wa'il Ibrahim in the first part and we were referring to effects of pornography on women but from that standing point how can you relate it from in your own words like um, what do you say about the effects of pornography on women yeah, Bismillah, SubhanAllah. Um, it's, you know, something which is a bit of a taboo topic in the community, let alone pornography being something embarrassing to address amongst the male population. And we know that within the male population, that is where the largest community of consumers are. But for it to be brought up within the females uh, of the community, whether, whether religious community or not, or whether Muslim community or not, there's a lot of stigma about it. 
But what we're seeing more and more is that there's a, a rise in the use, uh, the consumption and the addiction to pornography. And, and the impacts on women are just as detrimental as it is on, on men. So the numbers are the same or is it higher in women? For women, it's estimated about 28% of porn users are women. And of that population, 31% said that they watch weekly. It's also been estimated that from within the 28% of porn consumers being women, that 25% of them are married women. So even someone being in the sanctity or being safeguarded by marriage, there are still uh, impacts of pornography being seen in, in the married communities as well. So exposure to pornography has no bounds. It affects everyone, literally, even married couples and children. But what I really want to talk to you about, because people tend to look at things from the outer world in a very extreme manner. They don't want to know the details. As they say, no one likes to know how sausage is made. But uh, when it comes to the pornographic industries, I wanted to gain your insight on this one about sex trafficking. Now, how are these women, because in the end, it's not only the consumers that are being the victims, but uh, don't you agree that even the actresses over there, they're being victimized as well? Absolutely. When we look at uh, those individuals who perform in, in pornography films, number one, they have a very uh, uh, early expiry date in terms of their career in the porn industry. They are used and abused and then spat out and don't, don't work for very long. Uh, often, unfortunately, they enter the industry very young. And uh, these are often kids who are, uh, you know, from coming from very difficult backgrounds, whether they have very uh, low socioeconomic backgrounds or they've gone through different types of abuse. Uh, often they are individuals, females who have run away from home. And then, uh, you know, you have uh, people with sinister intentions who uh, capitalize and take uh, advantage of the vulnerability of these young girls and uh, pretty much open the door to a way for them to make very easy money. And often they're tricked into uh, being uh, engaging in some kind of sexual activity. And what happens is that sexual activity is recorded often without their permission. And then from there, they are trapped and forced into prostitution, pornography, illegal pornography, or sex trafficking based on being threatened with the use of that footage that it will be put online or that they will show, uh, they'll send it to that, that girl's parents or family. Um, and then what happens is the, the girl is then bound to, uh, to her, her captor basically um, through this, this coercion. And when we look globally at trafficking, it's estimated that there are about 4.5 million people right now, while we sit in the comfort of our homes, 4.5 million people who are trapped or forced into uh, sex labor or sex work. And within that population, 49% of the women have said that pornography was made of them during that, that the time of them being um, trapped and forced into human trafficking. Uh, the industry itself makes $99 billion annually. Uh, and that is a lot of money, subhanAllah. That's you know? only and one company or money, the entire world's company? No, the entire world. Like gl globally, the, the, the sex trafficking trade is worth $99 billion. And that's right up there next to the, the worth of pornography. And the thing with traffickers is when they can also sell their slaves, essentially slaves for sexual exploitation as well, it, there's a, a higher dollar attached to it. So there's big money to be made. And of course, we know the greed of human beings. They will do whatever they want in order to, to you know, gain a, an extra dollar, subhanAllah. So what we don't realize or what consumers don't realize is when they're sitting at home, presumably in so-called innocently watching their explicit content, they're addicted. They have, you know, an escalated type of addiction as perhaps we might learn or you have already learned from the other experts where they need more and more extreme, extreme forms of pornography. And what that, that will often lead to is the dark web, where you will then see content which has been sourced through sex trafficking, of uh, child pornography, of extreme cruelty, um, you know, the types of pornography which aren't being um, regulated like other forms of mainstream or popular pornography. So it's a very, very dark world. It's a very slippery slope, and there is nothing innocent about it. There's nothing innocent about it. And 
we have to just realize that uh, everything is linked. You know, anything evil, uh, anything destructive has links to greater evil. And we, you, you might think you're doing one sin uh, by watching some footage just for, you know, a couple of minutes, but the implications of that, the industry that it feeds, the people who get abused in that process, the exploitation that happens, uh, you know, we're all responsible for keeping that alive if we engage in consuming this type of content. May Allah bless you, sister. Truly, that each and everything that you've stated until now, I have three points to share, and your commentary is really vital. The first thing is the billions and billions of dollars that are being spent on these industries. Now, one thinks is that if only this amount of money was to resolve the world hunger problems and charitable projects, then you can only imagine the change in the world. But may Allah uh, grant exactly. us all yani, from his provision and not from anything else. And the Amen. second point, of course, is that these women are, as you have beautifully stated, enslaved. They are enslaved yeah. and they are being tricked yeah, into it. Children. Yeah, women and children, subhanAllah. And it's really and it's something people, scary. 4.5 million people, who is coming to rescue them? Who is coming to help them? Whilst people on the other side you know, of the world are watching them being harmed for entertainment and even paying money for it. So the person who is right now enjoying a pornographic movie, you can say to him f directly to his face that you are a supporter of these crimes or of these enslaved victims. C can we say it in this manner? I wouldn't say it in that way. I wouldn't use, I wouldn't cast judgment a lot of the time. People who are consuming are addicted and addicted from very early on in life, you know, by the age of 18, most um, most uh, young people have already established their addiction to pornography and they don't realise the greater implications of it. So rather than kind of saying, look at what you're doing, you are contributing, you know, from that angle, I would rather advise them and educate them and help to add to the reasons of Mashallah. why they should want to be motivated to quit. Mashallah, very beautiful, very wonderful. May Allah bless you, sister. And the last point that I wanted to have your um, approval for is that we would love to share your contact as someone um, experienced in this field for the Muslim sisters or for even non-Muslim sisters who would love to approach and gain your experience and be able to f like receive advisories from your end, especially that we find a high number, as you have earlier said, uh, the 28% and 25% of whom of, uh, are married uh, to, uh, they're already married, yes. as you have stated. So we would love to have your yes. approval, if possible, that are we capable of collaborating together and be able to stand as one to support everyone around the world in this form of addiction? Absolutely, inshallah. We're more than open to helping individuals recover from any habits and addictions that, that they have and helping them to stop the sins that they've been indulging in because no doubt they feel horrible, they feel disgusted with themselves and nobody wants to do something which is polluting and corrupting their heart and their soul and displeasing Allah. But sometimes before you know it, you're caught into, caught into it um, and you know, you're know you on uh, the addiction mode of, of the dopamine uh, the what would we call it like the dopamine uh, railroad you know just keep looping around and requiring that same hit so it's a very uh, real struggle and sisters are not safe from it sisters do struggle with it but let's lift the shame and lift the solo suffering the isolated lonely suffering of our sisters and know that they can reach out and we have communities of support we have programs to help recover and no one has to continue to live with it. And we ask everyone to stand with us and, and speak out against pornography, raise awareness about it. Don't shame people, but call people to choose a higher road, uh, a road of purity and chastity um, and of guarding their gaze and guarding their hearts, inshallah. May Allah bless you, sister. And inshallah, we will definitely be sharing your contact, the, the one pertaining to your, uh, the expertise itself, to the sisters out there so that we may able to advise them and tell them that you do not need to feel alone. And if you have any kind of problems, this is the person to go to. And we really do thank you and appreciate your presence today. We ask Allah to bless you, your family, and to protect you and your loved ones from all forms of evil and harm. Thank you very much for being here yeah. today, sister. And no problem. Thank you for having me. Jazakallah khair. Wa iyaikum. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. There you have it, brothers and sisters. Now I'm going to be concluding today's episode, speaking to the sisters out there. 
Sisters, you are not to be victimized. We are here by the grace of Allah to protect you, to aid you, to support you, to be your backs by the will of God. So we don't want you to feel that anyone will be judging you, anyone will be trying to attack you. You won't allow it by the grace of Allah. So we want you to be able to contact the sisters, the wonderful experts that are being with us today. Inshallah will be sharing with you all of their information so that you may be able to speak to them. And those who seek consultation, they are the ones to go to after Allah. May Allah bless you all. And now for the brothers, be there for your sisters, protect them, protect your wives from all forms of even harm and pray to Allah that you be able to be successful in such. I bid you until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.